What's up, guys, and welcome to another episode of The Block is Hot. Today, we're interviewing Sean, who actually has his whole entire own YouTube channel, and he's going to be talking about his project, which is Cardano Crocs Club. This project has been doing a ton of stuff recently, and they also just released their radioactive Crocs sometime in the past month. There are a lot of exciting things coming up with this project, and the team had reached out to me to do an interview and basically cover everything they're doing in this space and in this ecosystem. Now, I definitely wanted to do the interview just because this is a project that is doing a lot of stuff. They already have their C4 staking. They have some big announcements in the roadmap. And I really wanted you guys to know a little bit more about this project. But uh, without further ado, let's get started. Can you introduce yourself, Sean, to the block? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, thanks very much for having me. Um, uh, it's great to uh, come, on your, uh, come on your channel. Um, so anyway, my name is Sean, and uh, I started YouTube uh, about a year ago now, a little bit over a year ago, and you know, you may have seen a couple of my videos, especially if you're into Cardano. Uh, I was kind of, I made a couple of videos last year, and I'm from Ireland originally. I'm in Dubai right now. The camera's a little bit glitchy, it seems. So uh, we tried to fix that, couldn't fix it. So you'll have to bear with me with that. So anyway, uh, about, let's see, around October, so around six months or so ago, uh, we officially launched the Cardano Crocs Club, which uh, is a Cardano project that I'm one of the co-founders of, along with Jack and Mark as well. Um, we started, I, the idea for the project started a long while ago. I wanted to build uh, a project on Cardano for quite a while. I also wanted to build something related to poker and something related to kind of uh, almost like uh, those companies where they have multiple apps in the app store and it's kind of like an ecosystem of games. So that's kind of where the idea originally started for a while back. Um, I'm sure we'll get into that a little bit later, so I won't go into too much detail yet, but I'm very, very excited to be here and to talk about the project. We've got a lot of upcoming, we've got a lot of things coming up soon that have, uh, are going to be very, very big. Sweet. Yeah, man. And uh, definitely check out his channel, guys. I mean, you probably know his channel just because he has hundreds of thousands of, subs of subscribers <laughs> now. So hopefully we can get there yeah. at that point in the future. But Sean, did you want to show them... Um, some of the art of the current Cardano Crocs and the radioactive Crocs and kind of just go through the website and show what you guys are doing. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, this is the, uh, this is the original mint. So this is the original Cardano Crocs, the OGs, uh, as it were. So as you can see, it's a 2D profile picture NFT. Uh, I think they look pretty cool. You are you are an early holder, would you say, of Cardano Crocs, or when did you get I would in? say a couple months ago. I don't know exactly yeah, when yeah. you guys had, had minted, but I've been in for a while. Um, I actually had like two of these guys, and then I also had them up leading up. I bought some radioactive Crocs, too, when they actually came out. Oh, sweet, sweet. Yeah, so you've been around the block. <laughs> I've been a while <laughs> with, So you were around the block, yeah, uh, with OGs for RA, yeah. So these were the original mints, so... Uh, super cool. The floor price uh, we minted for around two or around sixty. So now it's or we minted for sixty. So now it's up to um, uh, two hundred. Now it was obviously a little bit higher. It's down recently because you know CNFTs as a whole are down a little bit. Overall, we're focused on the long term vision, as I'll talk about a little bit later. So uh, we don't mind a little bit of fluctuation in the short term with the price. So the recent mint that we just did um, was the radioactive Crocs. Uh, so as you can see here, they look pretty cool as well. They're um, uh, inspired, obviously, by the originals. You can kind of see similar pose and whatnot. And obviously, uh, they're 3D rather than 2D. So the idea behind this was to have uh, the radioactive croc for the metaverse. So we're not actively building the metaverse ourselves. We are uh, in the process of creating some very, very exciting partnerships with people in the metaverse and with, um, you know, uh, Pavia, not just Cardano, um, Metavi, Metaverses, whatever, but also with potentially Metaverses across chains as well. And so the radioactive croc will be the, when we get there eventually, the Metaverse, uh, the Metaverse skin that Cardano croc users can then use in the Metaverse to interact with the different games that we build that can be used in the metaverse. And also, you know, just like any other skin, they can go around and show it off and flex on everyone who's not a radioactive croc. Yeah. That's it's the new Rolex, dope. I'd say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I actually think these radioactive crocs look pretty cool in the sense that like, they're like this mutated looking crystals, colorful, mm -hmm. like they definitely look cool. Like the OG crocs yeah. have like the OG vibe, 
to them. But I think like yeah. these radioactive yeah. Crocs like stand out more to me as far as like the different layers and details they have. Yeah, yeah, they're not confused with Barbie dolls anyway. They're uh, yeah, they're pretty <laughs> uh, acidic. They've uh, yeah, I, I think they look pretty sick as well. Overall, uh, I'm very bullish on it, even just based on how they look. I think a lot of people, uh, the more people who find out about radioactives, it's just there's very few projects that look like this. It just kind of stands out based on the art alone, and of course the utility is a whole other story, which um is what we're mostly focused on building yeah do you mind going over the website real quick and just showing you uh showing the block basically the different utilities that this project has because i know you guys are doing a lot of stuff uh especially when compared to a lot of different projects out there and that was one of the things that originally had drew me to cardano crocs and i had a like John Boy and a couple a uh, couple people that yeah. are really like hardcore in your community be like, dude, look at like all the, the crock paper and all these things uh, that you guys are doing. So what exactly yeah, no, do you guys yeah. already do? And like, what are you guys planning on doing too? Yeah, absolutely. And we have an insane community. Like the people who, like so many people are just so invested in the project and it's great to see. And then when someone new comes along like you, uh, a couple of months ago then there's so many people who are so helpful just explaining everything because there is quite a bit going on uh, as you did mention and i'll talk about now but it's so great to see people who have that sustained interest because a lot of projects you know they mint and then it's kind of over and the hype dies out but because we're focusing on utility and have so many things coming up this year and beyond uh, i think people are really bought into the long-term vision which is why they're uh, they're putting in that time and effort which is so great to see them so uh, so happy to see it. Uh, so this is our homepage. As you can see, it says Radioactive Crocs Club up there. So, you know, this charming fella is an example of one of the uh, 3D Metaverse NFTs. So you should go on the website if you're interested in the project. You can kind of read about it. You can read about what we're doing on uh, Cardano, what we're doing in terms of the utility we're building as well. So just to go into detail about that, what we've already done, of course, we already have had our two mints with the original OG Crocs and the ORA Crocs. And what they will be used for, uh, as I hinted at earlier, is they will be the playable characters in the games we're building. So the first game that's coming out uh, is the Croc Breeding game. So this is something we're very excited about over the next few weeks, and we'll be dropping a few hints along the way as well. If you check out the Discord, there'll be a few little prizes for people who are paying attention uh, to, the, to, what we're, to what's going on. But the Croc Breeding game is something we're very excited about. It's not going to be the biggest craziest game some triple a rated game but it is going to be the first game that croc users can actually use both their crocs and the tokens that are generated so crocs can be staked um where you stake them in the cardano croc club dashboard and then you farm c4 tokens uh each day you're able to earn reward so og crocs earn up to 200 c4 tokens a day so c4 is currently valued uh, it fluctuates because there's not a ton of liquidity but it's currently valued at roughly around one cent. So if you think about it, a person who's holding um, a top tier croc is earning about one or two ADA, depending on you know where the price is, uh, one or two ADA per day. So even though we haven't even built the utility yet, and there's not even much volume or attention being paid to the token yet, the price of the token, just based on the people who have the Crocs and what they put their value on and not even willing, not even selling it, even though they've been generating it for months, is one penny, which doesn't sound like a lot. But when you have so much supply that's being generated by the people staking it and, you know, there's not a ton of information about the token yet, uh, it's kind of crazy that the price is relatively that high and it's not like 0, 0.00 like uh, Shiba Inu or something like that. So what the C4 token will be used for in the breeding game, just to go back to that, is you'll be able to stake two uh, crocs. You can either stake two OGs, two ORAs, or one OG, one ORA, and then you can use the C4 token as well as land, and that will allow you to generate a baby croc. And then the baby crocs is essentially a crocagachi game or a... a a tama what's the word for tamagotchi maybe <laughs> tamagotchi yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so it's basically like a tamagotchi game uh for nfts where you'll be able to uh buy supplies from the in-game store and you'll be able to take care of your uh baby croc and you'll essentially be able to level it up uh like a video game character and what's cool about that is it's not just going to be in one game where you know there's a new call of duty every year and then it just goes away forever for every uh, piece that you're putting for every C4 token 
uh, purchase that you make and then you put into the baby croc, that baby croc can then be used in any future games uh, where the baby croc is obviously a part of it. It won't be necessarily in every game uh, because the, you know, the OG crocs, the Ore and the baby crocs, they'll all have different functions within the different games, but it will be a character that can then be traded. So what's really cool about that and what's really cool about NFTs in general is the fact that you're always constantly building towards something and the effort you're putting in today can be rewarded a month, six months, a year from now. That's what I find really cool as well. So for example, if you are building, let's say in the poker game to switch over to that, which is the thing I'm most excited about, um, and we should have the first version coming out in the next few months, in that game, when we have the characters, so you have, let's say, the OG Crocs, and we'll probably integrate Baby Crocs into it in a slightly different way. But uh, regardless, once you have, let's say, just to give it an easy example, if, if you have, let's say, people sitting around the table, the poker table, and each of them have their own character, it'll be a status thing. So the more valuable things you give to your Baby Croc uh, when you're breeding it, the more valuable that character is, the more status it has in the game. And there might be some sort of way to earn more rewards or something like that, or to get, you know, a lower percentage of the pot taken. Um, or, you know, we'll, we'll think about, we're still uh, doing the details of the poker game, exactly how uh, it will work in terms of rarities and stuff like that. But that character can now be sold to somebody else. So even if you get bored of the game and you want to move on, you've put in all this work, all this effort, it's not gone to waste. You can then trade it on the marketplace and you know buy something else with it after oh, that, that get your that's aid pretty cool so like throughout yeah. playing the game and leveling up your croc in a sense like they're going to get additional uh benefits yeah in that, yeah in that absolutely. specific poker game maybe there's lower fees maybe they have whatever the case is so like yeah essentially they can play the poker game maybe they earn c4 tokens and then you know, let's say they're done playing poker, whatever the case is. Now that is an asset that could potentially make more money in poker. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, absolutely. And then that value doesn't just isn't just tied to that one person. Then if they get bored of poker, um, they can then list that up and get ADA for it. And obviously, uh, the more popular the game is, the more players there are, the more valuable that those NFTs uh, become so it's it's just a really cool cycle that builds on itself over time you know and it really incentivizes everyone uh, to kind of push the project out there as much as possible so I think I think uh, it's gonna once we get the game launched it's just gonna take off very fast because the players are the most the players uh, who are breeding the baby crocs and again it's, uh, it's I'm not saying the details exactly of how baby crocs will be related to poker it's just kind of an example um, well, I'll be putting out an announcement in the next few weeks, kind of going over the details about that. Um, but in relation to the other games as well, you can kind of see how the players themselves become almost like a marketing force for the game, for the project itself, because they're incentivized to get as many people playing, which is uh, really cool. Wow. Yeah, that is super dope. And now the I know that you guys already like play poker uh, in your discord as like a community involvement thing. Yeah. When is the exact poker arcade game uh, slated to, to release? Do you guys have yeah. like a time frame for that when people can actually like start playing with these crocs? Yeah. So the time frame we haven't put an official release date or anything for that. And we have, I haven't actually talked about the discord. So this is kind of, uh, it's a pretty interesting thing. I think this is the first time we've talked about a specific date for it. Um, but it, we're looking for kind of early Q3 when the kind of alpha version would be out. Of course, there's lots of updates to come. We see what works, we see what doesn't work. But the first game that will actually be playable, you know, uh, online, multiplayer, you can play with your friends, people with Crocs, et cetera, et cetera. That first game, we are hoping to get that out uh, very early Q3. So very excited to have that coming, you know, very excited. We have a great team, of course, of Pokeball. It was just an insane, uh, insane in terms of doing all this development, managing the team. And he does a lot himself as well. And uh, we're getting so much done. We've got a lot to do with the breeding game coming up in the next month, which is kind of like our short term focus. But the poker game is where we see is our first big game that can really attract a lot of people to the project. So that's where a lot of resources go is going right now. And just to kind of go back to what you were saying there, uh, just for people watching, if they want to join in those poker tournaments, it's uh, you kind of you buy C4, which you can get for obviously one cent in the market. The lowest tournament is 150 to buy in. 
And then the higher stakes tournament is 6,000 C4. So obviously, if you have a croc, then you can just generate that in like a couple of days, depending on the rarity. And then you can just enter in the tournament for free. And, you know, it's pretty cool. That, it, that, that actually is a pretty cool part that like, one, anybody will be able to play this. But two, that really gives value to the utility token that people are getting from the C4. It's almost like if you have a croc, like you're generating yeah. poker chips every single yeah, in, in a sense. Like you're That's generating exactly, poker yeah. chips yeah, yeah, that yeah. you can maybe use to get more poker chips if you are playing well at the poker <laughs> game. So it's like a very yeah, interesting way of doing all, yeah. like a play to earn. <laughs> oh like yeah, that is, yeah. That is out, yeah. that is actually very interesting. And like because for me, like, I think poker is pretty fun. So who knows if I might jump on one day and you can actually make a decent amount of money through crypto, uh, which is a pretty cool process. And because like most tokens that projects do don't have like a ton of utility. And yeah, a lot of, to put a lot of projects yeah. right now, it's like the utility might be so, so far away because they're doing like yeah. some sort of really complicated triple A game or something like that. So it's, it, yeah. that's actually that's actually pretty cool i didn't know that how soon that game was actually going to come out and how that worked yeah well you know i'm not i'm not on the front line of the development so i don't want to put too much pressure on them but we are you know and it won't be like the final version of the game or anything like that it won't be the mobile app uh, launching at that point but we will have the first web-based version that will be playable um like pretty much any other poker game all the basics will be there. All the fun stuff will be there and it will be integrated with C4 as well. So very excited for that. One thing I do hate uh, though, is a lot of projects who just put out, you know, the utility is like 10 years away or it's kind of very vague and uh, they have a token, but it's not really clear why it's valuable, how it will be valuable, et cetera, et cetera. So for this project, I wanted to make sure that uh, the token, like it's very easy to understand why the token will be valuable, why it will be used, and therefore why the OG Crocs who are earning a ton of C4, and of course the Ore who are earning a little bit less because um, it was a bit of a cheaper mint, why both of them are super valuable because they're generating those tokens passively every single day. So as you can see, here was the roadmap. So we had the exclusivity burning, which seems like forever ago now, but that was essentially where we allowed croc holders the ability to burn their crocs in order to be able to they were able to burn two of their less rare crocs for the chance at uh, getting a new croc of higher rarity so it's a look at the draw when they were first minting those original crocs so we wanted to give everybody a chance uh, to get a higher croc and it was actually very very good odds back then so a lot of people you know they burned two like nine thousand crocs and then they got a croc in the top one thousand or something like that which generates a uh, ton more c4 so then after that we've done our merch drop um, which we'll be doing another uh, limited edition merch drop led to Radioactive uh, soon as well. And then we ha we've released our C4 token. We've had C4 staking, so building out the dashboard, just allowing people to be able to earn that C4 uh, into their wallet every single day. We established the Cardano Crocs Club Council, which is a member of, su which is a collection of super dedicated people to the project to do so much in terms of announcements, in terms of community building, reaching out, explaining everything that goes on, and just overall being uh, very, very helpful in terms of the ideas as well of where the project should go uh, related to marketing and related to uh, what the game should do and just kind of ideas overall for how to make the project better. So that's something great as well. And then, of course, we have Radioactive Crocs, which came out a few, uh, a few weeks ago, around about a month ago and now. Um, and then that's the second merch drop that will be coming out. And then the first game that I mentioned earlier is those baby crocs. So if you want to get in on that, I'd suggest you get some OG crocs, you get some RA crocs, and you either generate some C4 passively or you'll be able to buy it. Um, and then you'll be able to mint your own baby croc, which, you know, is pretty, it's just going to be a fun Tamagotchi game. And, you know, obviously if you put in a ton of effort, then it can essentially uh, be traded for a higher amount uh, in the future as well. Um, so we've been purchasing some metaverse land. We have purchased some plots uh, of Pavia back, you know, before it became very, very expensive. Obviously, it's dipped a little bit, um, but we bought some, you know, months and months and months ago at the start of the project. So uh, that is owned by the holders of the project, um, which will allow us to build just Cardano Croc Club Arcade in Pavia. And we're look we'll be looking to do that in pretty much any uh, big metaverse as well. And then we have the baby, Bre uh, we have the, uh, the first game, which is the baby breeding crocs. I think it's, yeah, it's a little bit uh, jumbled up there. That was obviously the roadmap before 
we had the uh, the official name and we have the new roadmap, the gaming incubator, which is something, you know, it's just so much. There's almost like I almost forget it myself. We got so much going on. So the gaming incubator is essentially where we're helping new Cardano projects in terms of their marketing, in terms of getting users. Uh, we allow them to uh, post to our community and they can kind of attract more users to their project. And in return, we can generate ADA. We can generate whitelist spots that is all returned 100% back to our members, just trying to generate as much value as we can for them. And then of course we have the big, you know, the big, the biggest thing we're working on right now, which is the C4 poker game, which I want to be the biggest poker game in Cardano, the biggest poker game in crypto period. And I think all poker games will eventually be crypto poker games. So hopefully we can be one of the biggest ones of those as well. Yeah, that's like an interesting, so just to get this roadmap um, process for me, you guys had your OG yeah. Crocs, you enabled uh, basically staking on your dashboard where you can get the C4 token every day. Those C4 yeah. tokens are going to be eventually used for poker and these different uh, arcade games that you're, that you guys are creating. Uh, you had some merch along the way, but then one of the big yeah. things that's going to be coming out soon is this breeding of the baby Crocs which is going to be kind of like a Tamagotchi game. So you're going to be able to yeah. uh, take care of it, grow it. And when you do that, that is going to be more valuable when it comes to stuff in the future, such as maybe lower fees on, on poker tournaments. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, and stuff like future that. games as well. And, yeah, and future games as well. Um, and yeah. now you said the breeding, you're going to announce that uh, the whole process and timeline of that sometime in this next month. Yeah. So I have put out one announcement into the Discord and we've kind of, we've been updating it, but all the fine details, you know, the date when it's coming out, stuff like that. Um, we should, I, we should have that kind of known internally in the next, in the next week or so. And then we will be putting out an announcement, you know, in the next couple of weeks for, uh, or I don't want to put say the next couple of weeks and then it's not, I'm a bit of an optimist. So we'll say uh this month we should have like a firm date of when it's coming out and stuff like that so yeah it's kind of like uh you know it's a game where it's not a trial run like it's a really cool game in and of itself but it's kind of that first game where we have got all of the development bugs out that we can kind of basically just take everything we learned from building it and we can use all of that knowledge to make sure that the poker game is working perfectly uh you know, connected to C4 and everything works with, you know, back and forth between the wallets for when that launches um, early Q3. Yeah. And like you did bring up a, an interesting point with the C4 poker and like basically the cryptification of different games. Cause I know for my dad, like he's super into poker, like he would go to Vegas sometimes, but living, yeah. uh, you know, depending on where you live in the United States, like gambling online is not even a legal thing yet. Like you, like there used to be poker sites where you could easily do this. And, and now a lot of them had gotten taken down, but what's crazy yeah, about Black cryptocurrency. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. what's crazy about cryptocurrency, it's like completely decentralized and you are starting to see a lot of these different casinos or gambling sites that are crypto based start up. I even went on one, uh, lost some money playing like some, uh, <laughs> some blackjack on one of them. I can't even remember the name of it yeah. on, on Ethereum. So it's going to be cool because if you guys can actually deliver on making this ecosystem and, and setting up the tokenomics for how this poker game is going to work, and if it becomes widely popular, then if people want to play into it and get those C4 tokens, that will hopefully bring up the value of the Crocs because they are going to be generating those tokens. So I like how you guys yeah. like yeah, yeah. thought out the, the kind of the circle there, because I feel like a lot of projects, they're like, okay, we're going to do a utility token, but they haven't really mathed out how they're going to basically have a circle of life of, okay, how are we going to make sure the Crocs go up over time and are more valuable over time? Well, they produce yeah. this token. Yeah, yeah. But how are we going to make sure that token is valuable over time? Okay, well, we have this game. We have this utility. Yeah, that's what kind of separates us from a lot of those projects because it's really just a great feedback cycle because there's so many reasons why uh, I think that the value of OGs and RAs will, uh, OG Crocs and radioactive Crocs will increase over time because it's not just generating C4, which I think is the biggest component, but it's also the fact that they're going to be the highest status items in the game. So a lot of people and, you know, 
uh, they level up, level up, level up in different games like World of Warcraft or, you know, Call of Duty or whatever. And they get like some gun that they can't sell or anything like that. It's not, and it's not even that they're able to generate some token that's useful. They do it all because it's all of a status thing. Like you can, who can get the, uh, who can go the furthest, who can get the, uh, the best upgrades, et cetera, et cetera, who can get the new thing that comes out. So these crocs that have their fixed rarity, especially the highest rarity ones, they'll be the ones that everyone wants to get. It's like an eight ball pool. Everyone wants to get that, you know, the golden queue. I haven't paid it in a while, but everyone wants to get, you know, the, the queues that cost like a million coins, two million coins, even though they don't get anything back just because they want to show off that they were able to win those coins in the first place. Uh, so that combined with the fact that they're actually able to generate the token that's used in the game, I think it just gives insane value to OG Crocs and to radioactive Crocs um, and to baby Crocs as well, depending on how they're integrated into the game, uh, which we'll announce a little bit closer to uh, the release date for poker. But it gives, it gives a lot of value to the NFTs because their value isn't going to change and the people who want to uh, compare and compete are going to end up spending C4, not just to generate the tokens, but to kind of show off among themselves and among their friends. Dude, that's also a really interesting point that I wasn't really thinking about. Because like, for me, like people that watch my channel, I'm like a, a, a pretty much a minimalist. Like I really don't care about like a lot of, um, like I guess like flexing like that. Like I'm a very like, uh, I don't know, I wear white t-shirts all the time and black t-shirts all the time. Yeah. But it is like an interesting thing. Like a lot of people do really care about that. Like. What is my, cause like Twitter profile pics are so important for NFTs because people yeah, want to be like, oh, yeah, yeah. okay, this is my PFP. Um, so yeah, it's all the flex, yeah. 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 So what's interesting is like when it comes to this poker game, like if I'm imagining just different seats and s instead of like a little icon of an individual, you have an icon of your specific NFT. And the only way you yeah. can have that icon for your player's seat is if you actually own that NFT. Yeah, so people exactly, could be yeah. like, oh, crap, like that dude has an OG croc or, oh, that dude has like a top 1000 croc. And maybe yeah, if they click on that person's icon, maybe they can actually see that croc on pool.pm. Just some ideas I'm spitting out because like that oh, would yeah. be cool. No, great. Yeah. Now, are they are the rarities? Because I know you said with the uh, the baby crocs, how, you know, with the with the Tamagotchi like game, how you can level them up and and different things like that are the rarities going to have a big impact on the rewards for the actual poker game? Like how do you guys make it so they're incentivized, but at the same time, not getting some sort of competitive advantage as far as the play yeah. of the game? Yeah. Well, they're not going to be able to see other people's cards or something like that just because you're special edition. You know? Yeah. Uh, so it won't be, oh, crap. It won't be a competitive <laughs> advantage like that. That would be something that would be very valuable, man. Um, but it won't be something like that. It'll be more so the biggest advantage will be that they're able to generate more of the token that's used in the game. And so the more players that play the game, even if they've never heard of Cardano Crox Club, they just want to play hopefully the most popular uh, crypto poker game. They'll be just buying the C4 token and then they'll kind of get into it and they'll see it. Oh, it's a bit of a flex status thing. And then you can also generate the tokens. So, you know, instead of having to use a bit of money out of your paycheck every day, you can just generate, you know, the C4 token and uh, play for free as well. So it won't be a competitive advantage in the terms of you're not going to get, you know, extra lucky. You're not going to get aces every hand, every hand or something like that. That wouldn't be fair, of course, but it will be something that we may do something where there's, you know, if there's a percentage of the pot taken, you know, for development upkeep, I don't know. It probably, it won't be, it'll be as small as possible or whatever, but maybe there will be less fees. We're thinking about something like that. And then of course they generate more tokens and of course, biggest flex as well. So uh, yeah. It's just, you know, I'm very, very excited for it to launch. I can't wait. No, that is pretty cool. You guys are definitely doing like a lot of different stuff here. Um, and like you guys already have some of the stuff already out. Like, like I went on your guys' dashboard where you can actually stake it. And you guys like have a full complete and working dashboard with these token claims, which is pretty insane on the, dev on the developmental side because a lot of projects haven't really done that yet where you can have yeah. your own dashboard yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and really get those, um, those reoccurring tokens. Now, as far as few, like future plans, I saw that you guys were talking about some sort of swamp land or metaverse or what, what exactly was going on with the, with the swamp aspect that I had seen. Yeah. 
Well, that's kind of an area where we're still kind of thinking about what to do. So we originally were thinking, we we're originally thinking of potentially building our own metaverse. And we kind of had a partnership uh, that we could with some people who are building a metaverse and we're kind of thinking something like that. But overall, we decided to narrow down and to focus on the highest impact areas, which I think is the poker game and then perhaps some other casino based games or arcade games in the future. So the Swampland is something that I'll be updating a little bit more on over the next couple of months. The biggest focus now is on the croc breeding game and the poker game coming out. But we will be doing something, obviously, you know, the land uh, will be connected to baby crocs as well. It's not going to be that we're building our own metaverse, but it will be something uh, I have. It's kind of still in the works and I'll be sharing more details on that in the next couple of months. Okay. Okay. It's, it's something pretty exciting. <laughs> it's something pretty exciting, but I don't want to. You don't want to give too early, much okay? info yeah, yeah, yeah. right now. <laughs> yeah. No. It's, it should be pretty. People will be excited when, it, when we announce it though. That's all I'll say. And it seems like, so it seems like with this project, it really is an emphasis on like the games that you guys have coming out. Do you got, like, are you kind of envisioning, um, cause you say like croc arcade, are you kind of envisioning like a lot of different games? Are you mostly sticking to like the breeding and poker? Do you have like, if you are going to do more games, like, do you guys have ideas of what you really want to, um, do? Yeah. So uh, we are going to be releasing multiple games. Um, and the vision is to have kind of like uh, a Zynga. So they have, you know, Zynga Poker, obviously, it's the biggest game. Yeah. But then they also have a lot of other games. But what you have to remember is with a project like ours, you know, we don't have unlimited, you know, resources like a massive company like that. So uh, what I'm really, really focused on and what we're all focused on is making sure that we build a couple things and we build them really, really well. Um, because if you have, you know, a thousand, terrible games you'll get no users but if you have one really 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 good game then it's kind of an exponential effect where you get a ton of users for that and then that can you know we could uh, we could then uh, use that as a base to then build those other games because you have just a super positive um, flywheel effect where you have users that then can you know easily be diverted into the other games and then you can also generate more C4 through, you know, percentage of the pot or whatever that can be then used to develop those other games as well. So we're making sure we are going to build an arcade in terms of building a ton of different games, um, maybe blackjack, poker, uh, casino based games, and also, you know, kind of more uh, just kind of fun games, like kind of fun, addictive mobile games, like a flappy bird or something like that. But really the focus is now is, making sure that the, pro the things we do build are built as well as we can possibly build them to attract as many users as possible. And I think that's a good approach too. Like, cause there's definitely gonna, you guys are early, especially on Cardano. There's yeah. definitely gonna be, yeah. there's, de there's definitely gonna be like people that are trying to compete and do a similar thing in the future. So you guys are really like, if you can really like be the first player in the market and really get a lot of people playing the game, I do think that's like, probably the best focus to have because who knows in five years yeah. if like these yeah. other companies just like try to take over the industry but because you guys were able to start early and already get a lot of that player base you know you guys would have that early starter advantage which would you know obviously be beneficial yeah absolutely and i think what's great about cardano what's great about our community uh as well is that Cardano people in general, like they want to support the Cardano based project. They don't want just, you know, Zynga poker that uses eight or whatever. Um, you know, obviously the players that come directly from there uh, will probably switch, prefer that until they find out about uh, the Cardano Croc Club poker. But the, the community that we're building and Cardano, the Cardano community in general, I think is really going to rally around not just our poker based project, but the projects and the games that are built in the Cardano ecosystem because the more they grow, uh, the more valuable ADA will become as well. So I think we do have, we're very, very fortunate to be, um, you know, the leading Cardano poker game right now anyway, even though we haven't launched yet, because there's no other real competitors to us. Um, and that will, I think, be a great advantage, just given how big the Cardano community is and how many people love to play poker in that community as well. I think there's quite a bit of overlap with the risk taking of crypto and poker. So I think there's going to be quite a high percentage of people who, who give it a shot. Now, my, my next question here, um, 
is like, what are you guys trying to do or what do you guys feel? Because most of the time I cover upcoming projects. Um, but like, there's so much stuff upcoming in this already project. So this was a little interesting talking to a project that was already established, but what do you, what do you think that you and your team and community are doing that is really separating you from other projects? And why do you think that people listening should invest in you guys and also invest in the project in the community? Like what's the, what's the, what, what, what's the reasoning behind the why I should invest, I guess. Yeah. Well, I don't want to necessarily use the word invest because, you know, kind of might get into dodgy territory. <laughs> but what I, yeah. you know, what I would say, you know, no financial advice, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> what I would say, though, about why we people should look into the project a little bit more is because I don't really see any other projects. There's a few good, great projects, but there's very few projects that have the long-term focus that we have on building the best utility possible. Marketing is very important. And we've recently hired a marketing team and they're helping us develop the strategy uh, for Q2, Q3, Q4 at the moment. And we have some exciting things that will be coming that way um, over the next couple of weeks that I'll be announcing as well. Um, but the biggest focus that's going to determine the best projects long-term, the most valuable projects long-term, in my opinion, is going to be the projects that focus on building that long-term utility. So if you agree that, you know, it's not all about just hub and marketing and getting these short-term pumps and then the project dumps next week or next month or whatever, but you want a project that's actually focused on making sure that in three years, five years time, they're going to be more valuable than they are today and hopefully much more valuable than they are today. And that's the mission of the project and you also like to play poker, then the Cardano Croc Club is probably, uh, it's probably for you. Sweet, man. Um, this has been pretty cool, like checking out the project and actually getting direct information from you. Because uh, I know like going through the, the different, and also guys, if you want more information, you can go through this, this Croc paper on their website. Uh, but it's, yeah. always, it's always beneficial to, to hear from one of the founders here. Um, and that's like why I like doing these interviews is because we're actually able to get like the inside perspective or scoop of what you guys are working on that just translates so much more than, you know, me going on your website and reading stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I really enjoyed coming on here as well because, you know, obviously I want my project to do well, but I think what you're doing and like covering all these small projects that aren't necessarily getting uh, the coverage on on larger channels. I think that's great because that just benefits uh, Cardano overall. So I was really excited to come on as well. And, you know, I think your channel is going to do very well in the future because you're just providing so much value in those pockets where there's a lot of people interested and people will get more and more interested over time, but uh, they're not being covered, I don't think, as much as they should be. And it's it's great for Cardano as well. Yeah, and that's that's hopefully the goal. And that's and And the big thing is, yeah. is like, there's a lot of projects already out that have established themselves and are doing big things and have a lot of utility like you guys. And then there's also projects that are trying to come out. And, and basically yeah. there is this bridging that needs to take place. There are people watching that are looking for different projects to get into, to fall in love with, to think long-term with. Uh, and then there are projects yeah. that ha are having a hard time, it, it, you know, really exposing themselves especially if they're new or even established projects like you guys where it's like you guys have so much going on and so much to cover that it's like some of it just do gets lost in translation to everyone that's like trying to keep up with it so hopefully yeah, hopefully yeah. and and by the way guys like it i don't do me paid, sometimes as well <laughs> yeah and yeah, and by yeah, the yeah. way guys i don't do any uh paid promotions or anything like I, I'm just having them on because I actually do like this project. And like I, I said previously, I've been in this project for a while. Um, I still have like over 10 radioactive Crocs just waiting in my wallet, anticipating what they're going to do with, uh, with this project here because they are delivering on a lot of things that a lot of projects say they are and don't. So I think like this was a really cool project to cover here. Yeah. Well, yeah, absolutely. And I, I'm glad you, I'm glad you think that, and I'm glad you are a radioactive holder and you still have a couple OGs as well, or. Yes. Uh, I had bought, yeah, yeah. I had bought two more OGs basically after the radioactive uh, drop happened. Cause people like yeah. to, you know, they panic afterwards. I'm like, all right, this yeah, is a good yeah, time yeah, to, to buy yeah, in yeah, for yeah. a, for a long term. Um, 
Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It, it's so, it's so interesting because I don't, tra- I'm not trading that many NFTs at the moment, but the kind of that post mint dump that happens is like so predictable. It's like the easiest money ever. in like any project, like it doesn't matter what the project, what it's doing, how valuable or unvaluable it is. It's just, you can just like buy them for like razor uh, for super cheap prices. So uh, it's, that's a good trading strategy if you're trying to trade <laughs> NFTs as well. And I actually just yeah. made a video on that that I posted last yeah, night. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, make yeah. sure to check that out because like it is so facts, man. You know, people mint stuff and then they're like, ah, <laughs> like, yeah. And it creates an opportunity for people that are willing to uh, basically see the long term of a project and are like, yeah, okay, it's just, you know. yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's just because there's so many, you know, it's kind of interesting because kind of leading up to, uh radioactive we had like a super small well not super small but relatively smaller group of people who were just holding like a ton of ogs and then because people were getting so excited about ra we started to get which is great as well obviously want this but we started to get kind of more people who were buying uh, a smaller number of grocks and then they didn't perhaps they weren't as invested in the project and they didn't know as much about it because yeah as you said we just have a crazy amount going on um so they kind of got in just before mint and then you know things were kind of going crazy and then they didn't quite have the information or weren't aware of what's coming over the next few months. And so, you know, the price has dropped a little bit uh, for that reason, but I'm super bullish on it. You know, not that I have a conflict or interest or anything like that uh, over the next few months. I'm very, very excited. But dope, man. It was nice talking to you, Sean. Do you have any kind of closing statements here? Uh, right. My closing hey. argument or something. <laughs> hey, man, I'm going to need a uh, full thesis, 12 pages, <laughs> double space, times new. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear. Um, I don't I don't have much to say. Um, closing statement. I guess just kind of I'd say, you know, follow us on Twitter. You can kind of keep up to date. That's probably the best area um, to kind of get information. And then the Discord as well. I don't we tried to screen share. It didn't really work. But. The Discord just has basically a ton of information. It can be like a little intimidating if you've never been there before because there's like a hundred things, like a hundred different channels to go into. But just check out the Croc paper, go into like the general chat, see what's going on. There's tons of friendly people always talking about the project and always super willing to help. Uh, we got great people uh, in there like Mikor, like Asung, who are just willing to answer anybody's questions and really bring new people into the project, which is uh, it's phenomenal. And, you know, that's where I'd start if you're looking to get into the project. Sweet, man. Well, I hope everyone listening here today enjoyed the conversation that I had with Sean and, uh, you know, check out their project, guys. Like I said, I've had my eyes on this project for a while. And, you know, people, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you'll you'll know that. So, uh, but yeah, I hope everyone here has an awesome day and enjoyed this interview. I'll catch you guys on in the next video.